That's it. I'm taking up photography. Hi. Dan asked me to introduce this session. We're going to examine how to take pictures of animals at the zoo. To do this, you can use nearly any camera but a medium to medium long zoom is best. Let's start now. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Come on back. I know you're just an avatar, but hey, uh, I was wondering if you'd like to go out for a coffee sometime. Ooh, that's disappointing. That's not how I programmed her. Hello. I'm taking over this session because Anna is filing charges with HR. Wait a second, wait a second, enough of this. Let's talk about going to the zoo. To successfully take photographs of animals at the zoo, we've got three basic tools in our bag that we can use. We've got cell phones, which are the most convenient. Everybody's got one. Uh, we've got medium point-and-shoots and long-range point-and-shoots, which are really flexible, although some point-and-shoots are only uh, automatic only and don't have a lot of adjustable features. And finally, we've got DSLRs, which is probably the most bulky solution, although there are some point-and-shoots that are pretty big. Uh, probably the most bulky solution. They have a infinite number of lenses available for them and they can be manually adjusted. All the good things. However, DSLRs are not always the best solution. So which camera is best for taking photographs at the zoo? Well, we have some major restrictions to the zoo that we have to consider, so let's look at those. First, we have animals in glass enclosures. Glass enclosures present their own problems. You'll have animals that are close to the glass. You'll have animals that are far from the glass. And you'll have glass that's smudged. Usually, you'll have glass that's smudged. <laughs> you have to learn to deal with the glass, either by standing very close to it or picking a clean spot with no reflections. Fences at the zoo are common. The, the problem with fences, of course, is that the wire is there. so. You're going to have animals close to the wire. That presents a real problem, by the way. You're going to have animals farther away from the wire where you're going to need a long lens to get to them. And then you got the wire itself, which keeps showing up in the movie all the time. And then you have open fields that have moats or, or pens around them or what, some sort of obstacle, water, whatever. You've got, if you've got glass enclosures, then a cell phone will usually work pretty well. Cell phones really work well in aquariums and places like that where the fish are going to be swimming right at the glass anyway. It's fairly easy to get, get them in focus and have uh, great shots that come out with it. Point and shoots will work for most subjects. Uh, DSLRs, DSLRs will work with nearly all subjects. But prime lenses on a DSLR are not as flexible, although you can still shoot fish in the aquarium with a prime lens. Medium zooms seem to be the most flexible. Extremely long zooms, you're going to need them if you've got animals out in the field. But generally speaking, extremely long zooms are, zooms are not needed. I find that it's strange. There is a medium to medium long zoom that's handy but once the animals get out to the back of the field where you got to sneak, you got to really have a long lens to catch up with them, then without spending $25,000 on a lens, the most adequate solution is one of the point and shoots uh, that are called super zooms point and shoots, like a P900, P1000, RX10, one of those. <coughs> Fences are a common problem. Uh, in the in the uh, zoo, the, the longer the focal length and the wider the aperture, uh, the better for fences. Because what you're trying to do is you want to get the animal away from the fence, catch the animal when he's away from the fence, and then you want to get up as close to the fence as possible and use the widest aperture and longest lens as possible, longest setting on the on the uh, length as possible, and that'll cause the wire to disappear. Here's an example video of that. Cell phones usually won't work well with fences. Uh, the cell phone is going to lock in on the fence and it's going to be irritating. Open fields, cell phones are great for adding context, 
or shooting people uh, at the zoo, but they're generally not as good for actually capturing the animals. For that, you're going to need that long lens we've been talking about. After freezing my butt off out there doing reporter on the scene vlogging, I got home and I said, well, geez, what camera would I use if I went to the zoo? I know what it is. I would take a wide to medium telephoto of some sort. That's either on a point and shoot or on a DSLR. And I'd take my cell phone. If you've only got a cell phone, take it to the zoo and take some fantastic pictures. You'll really like it. See you next session. Please take my picture. No one does that. I am so lonely.